Welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me and uh, pretty much becoming my regular co-host for this is Dave Eddy. What's up, man? Hey, Joe. uh, So are you saying we just became best friends? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Oh, my God. (laughs) Wow. Cool. I guess I'll take my head off Craigslist. (laughs) Uh, Good stuff, man. Uh, all right, well let's let's get right to it, man. So we're at halftime of the Cowboys Saints game, nine to three Saints over the Cowboys. Not too exciting of a game. Uh, I mean, nobody's really doing much of anything here, so it's a lot of you know. If you got the field goal kickers, you're happy, I suppose. But that's about it. Um, I mean, hoping we'll get some get some points rolling here soon. But both defenses look like they came ready to play. Yeah, I think you'll see some offense come in that second half for sure. That's uh, there's been. More than a handful of games this year where it's it starts off like that, and then they make some adjustments at halftime, and you know they get going. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, well, let's get rolling here with with the Sunday games and reactions. So we'll start with the Giants and Redskins, and ooh, this game was ugly. Um, Jones came out through you know through some picks, but you know overall looked solid again i'd say uh you know the, the picks were weren't great but you know he did you know throw, throw a touchdown he had some some yards on the ground uh on i say the probably the big story coming from the giants though is that you know wayne gallman looked really good uh you know seven seven targets caught six of them for 55 and a touchdown and got in the end zone running the ball too um I mean, what we thinking he can keep up, keep this up going forward. I mean, the Redskins, if, if anything, like their one plus was the run defense. I wouldn't expect it from him every week. He definitely had a good matchup uh, this week. Uh, I mean, he's unless they make a trade, which I doubt, um, or decide to you know pick somebody up um, that's available. I, I think he's obviously going to be the number one back for the next what. You know, they'll well, tell Bark that comes back with so three or four weeks. I, I think this is maybe is you know high watermark game, but I guess the potential is there. Yeah, and then on the Redskins side, it got ugly and ugly really, really fast. Keenum threw a couple, uh, Keenum threw a pick, and then just kind of did nothing after that. Running game couldn't get going. They finally brought in Dwayne Haskins, and much. Like I thought would happen if they brought him in, he looked terrible. Uh, he's just straight garbage. And uh, I don't know if you wrote – I'm pretty sure this is your note, but it's something I would have written too. I actually think they might lose to Miami, dude. This, this it was, game is it's hot your, It's your note. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this game is th- – this team is hot garbage. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Um, I mean, Haskins threw three interceptions to the Giants. And I don't care – I forget who responded to me on on Slack when I was like, I cannot believe they brought him in and he did this. Like whoever thinks that he's good, this should prove right here against the Giants. The Giants' defense is not good, and I forget like who it was, but they were like, oh, they they've been playing good since the second half of the Tampa Bay game, and I'm like, no, 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 no. The Giants are not good, not happening. I mean, can we take anything positive from from the Redskins? Um. I mean, not particularly. I think my I think my favorite Redskins player right now probably is just Chris Thompson. Um, I, you know, I mean, no, I mean, Warren, I'm not even joking. I mean, he was hurt today, so that. <sighs> yeah, but like, I don't know. I, I'm not sold on McLaurin yet. Um, I mean, Thompson is a guy that DFS wise, I sneak in there sometimes if you know I want to save a little bit of money. Um, yeah. Because I mean, he's he's going to get his catches for sure. Um, you know, if, if we if he can ever score a touchdown, that would be great. But He's got the potential, you know, to to sneak in there and get some carries. Uh, so, I mean, Chris Thompson, I think going forward is a, a good sneaky play um, in fantasy because obviously Redskins are going to be behind a lot, and he's going to be the running back in there uh, when they're throwing the ball the majority of the time. So, yeah, PPR I mean, leagues is pretty much mm-hmm. where it's at with him. Yep. Um, all right, moving on. Titans and Falcons. Titans took this one twenty four to ten. I, I think a lot of people were surprised at that one, dude. I don't think anybody that I knew was picking the Titans to win this game in Atlanta. Um, but they went and kind of handled it easily. Uh, Mariota came out and looking like Super Mariota again, dude. Um, three touchdowns, two of them in the first half. A.J. Brown had a big game. Davis had a big game. 
And then Derrick Henry, man, 27 carries. I mean, woo, that's a big workload, man. Only 100 yards, but hey, um, you know, he didn't get in the end zone, but 27 carries. That's pretty nuts. I mean, I don't know. Mariota isn't somebody I, I love, but it, is this kind of giving you a little hope? Like, hey, maybe he can make this happen? I'm not a huge Mariota fan at this point. I, I think he's had enough time to prove himself. And obviously the Falcons aren't a very uh, great team, uh, specifically on defense. So I wouldn't read too much into it. I mean, all, you know, it was three touchdowns for Mariota. All came in the first half. And then they, well, I mean, they ended up running the ball. So that that's, you know, definitely going to have a little bit something yeah. to do with why he was so productive in the first half and then fell off because they were just feeding the ball to Henry. And I don't know why you wouldn't do that. So, um, I mean, it all it all makes sense. Yeah. On the other side of the ball here, the Falcons. I mean, Matt Ryan put up a lot of yards, but that was it. Um, mm-hmm. The the one touchdown came from an Edo Smith um, end zone, you know, short, you know, red, red zone run. Matt Ryan, 397 yards off 53 attempts. I mean, they had to. They were playing from behind the entire game. Uh, but, you know, it's it's weird, though. Like, Jones did pretty much nothing off of it. This was an Austin Hooper day, Muhammad Sanu game, you know, nine catches each. Freeman had a lot of touches. But, I mean, the guys that people, I think, were relying on for fantasy, Jones and Ridley, I mean, basically not relevant today. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Titans do have a nice defense. They do. Um, but when, you know, Ryan throws for almost 400 yards, you would definitely – Expect that at least Jones would would get his right because uh, they were throwing the ball like crazy in the second half. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not worried about Jones. Um, I mean, if you own him in you know just a you know a, a regular fantasy league, you're obviously never going to sit him. Um, DFS wise, it's a little more matchup dependent. But I I had him in a few leagues because I did think that they were going to be behind um, early, like they've been pretty much all year, but. I was right and I was wrong at the same time because he didn't, you know, he didn't get a share. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, it's, I, I totally agree with you there. Pat's Bills, the next game, and this one was a lot closer than I think people thought it was going to be. I mean, like the Bills, we know have a good, solid defense, but I don't think anybody thought they were going to keep this a one possession game for most of the game. Um, Pat's ended up sne- uh, kind of snaking it out here, sixteen to ten, and it wasn't. I mean, just really, nobody did much of anything on offense here. I mean, the the one touchdown came from Brandon Bolden. Um, nobody started him. I, if you did, send me your lineup because uh, no, no, I don't believe you. Uh, but Brady, 150 off almost 40 attempts and a pick. Um, you know, White had eight receptions. That's kind of the highlight there. N- nothing, dude. Just nothing here. I mean, is this just kind of a, a bad game? And we're just going to... Give him a pass here. A little bit. I mean, you know, the, both teams have really good defenses and they're division opponents. So they play each other, you know, twice a year. They, they know each other pretty well. Um, I mean, impressed with the Bills. Um, that, that's a defense that I guess I could see going forward, uh, maybe being a little more valuable than I thought that it would be. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I mean, I wouldn't take too much more away from it. I mean, I, especially from the Patriots side, I, I wouldn't say all of a sudden, you know, there's a concern over the Patriots offense. Yeah, except it's unpredictability. Not not mm-hmm. bad, just you never know yeah, it's going to be from week to week. But yeah. on the Bills side, you know, Gore got his 109 yards. Uh, congrats to him, by the way. 15,000 career rushing yards. I saw a funny tweet where it's like, you know, he he's well on his way to 30,000. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this guy just won't go away. Um you know, not much in the in the in the passing game, but a lot of that had to do with the fact that uh, Josh Allen threw three picks and then got knocked out of the game by a pretty ugly hit, and uh, Barkley had to come in and look. Barkley played all right, you know, kept them in this game. They had a chance to win, just didn't make it happen. Um, and you know, unfortunately, John Brown looked like he was going to get in the end zone once or twice, but just didn't quite get there. He would have been the pretty much the game winner there had he had he done it late uh just didn't didn't work out for him but uh i mean you know, obviously i like i said the big story is is josh allen you know if, if he's knocked out i think this offense is totally different what do you think yeah for sure um we, we've talked about josh allen before and 
you know, he, he may not be, you know, the prettiest looking guy in the field, but he is pretty effective. Um, obviously against a good Patriots defense um, and him, you know, only playing three quarters, you know, he didn't have the greatest numbers, but again, I'm, I'm not worried about him. I, I just, we just see him to get healthy and get back on the field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving on here to the chiefs and the lions, dude, I thought, I thought your Lions were going to do it, man. It was, a, that was a hell of a game. Um, they were, they were keeping Mahomes in check there for a long time. And like, Honestly, Mahomes put up a bunch of yards, but no touchdowns. That's impressive, dude. Um, you know, McCoy got in the end zone. Uh, just nothing, nothing like screams out on paper, statistically wise, on offense for this team. But uh, you know, I guess Daryl Williams got in the end zone twice, two co- couple short yards, uh, short yardage touchdowns late in the game there that kind of sealed it for him. But um, I, I kind of just I. I like I don't think anybody anybody's worried about the Kansas City offense, you know. Much like same thing as we said with with uh, New England. But let's move over to Detroit side of the ball. I want to get your take here on this. You know, Stafford looked really good, two ninety one to three touchdowns. Carry on, finally got his man, twenty six carries, one hundred twenty five, although no touchdowns. Um, none of the receivers really stood out, but uh, I I think. The focus here now is on carry on, right? Like he got his carries and he actually looked good doing it. Is this is this kind of like the the game that's going to propel him to be the guy that we thought he was going to be all year? I mean, I wish I could say yes, um, but I, I can't. So, I mean, to be honest, the, the Chiefs, especially run defense, um, are are bad. So, uh, I mean, the Lions have been feeding carry on the ball all year, so it's it's nothing new. Now, this is you know a season high in carries, but it's because they were trying to control the ball, um, right. you know, control the clock. So he did get, you know, more carries, but he was also able to actually get some yards. So it wasn't just him either. Ty Johnson um, had some nice carries as well. And I, I think it's more that it was, you know, the, the team they were playing. I think it's more a Chiefs thing than a Lions thing. So, yeah, carry is going to continue to get his opportunities. Um, and he basically, he, he almost scored anyways. He, he fumbled on the on the you know one inch line, um, so he very easily could have had a touchdown. Yeah, um, but yeah, this that. is but yeah, this game has pretty been status quo for what the Lions have done. They've just got a little more yardage out of those carries today. Yeah, uh, Raiders and Colts. Raiders took this one 31-24. Again, another upset. I would say um, the Raiders kind of jumped out quick on them, and then and then kind of. Just kind of stayed stayed part for the course here, you know. Again, nothing crazy statistically for them. They, I want to say they, they got a defensive touchdown. I want to say, um, yeah, interceptions and a touchdown. They got a pick six real early on Brissett, um, and so that that helped big time. But you know, Carr only one eighty nine and two touchdowns. Darren Waller again, the big story, man. Seven receptions, you know, only fifty three yards, but still he's just being targeted. He's just a target monster, man. So PPR leagues. Where you know for tight ends, you're loving him. Uh, Jacobs looked good, 17 for 79. He didn't get the touchdown, but uh, there was a big 60 yard run by I don't even know who this guy is, Trevor Davis. Never heard of you. Uh, he had a big long run and that you know kind of took away from Jacobs. But I mean, anything to really take away from this uh, the Oakland side of the ball besides Waller just being a monster in the targets. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems as though, you know, four weeks is enough to prove that, you know, Waller is, you know, for real and part of that game plan. Uh, Tyrell Williams was was down a little bit. Uh, I mean, he's still got seven targets, so that's not bad. Um, caught three of them, only 36 yards, but another touchdown. So that's four weeks, four touchdowns for Tyrell Williams. So at least he's, you know, relatively consistent as far as, you know, scoring, you know, is concerned. So um, I guess, you know, if you're looking for a, you know, a third receiver or even a, a decent flex, I mean, he, he seems like a pretty safe bet at this point. I would agree, yeah. So on the Colts side of the ball, like I said, Brissett had that pick six early, but threw for 265 and three touchdowns overall. Almost led the comeback, but didn't quite get it done. Mack had a really bad game, but it, I think that was more just game script. He just got kind of pulled out of it. Yep. Um, you know, on the receiver side – a bunch of guys scored, including your boy Ebron. 
<laughs> Yay, man. Woohoo. Uh, go back to last week to hear what uh hear what Dave had to say about Ebron. Uh, but, yeah, that's my buddy, man. We're, we're <laughs> yeah, having we're actually buddy, man. Yeah, we're going on a, a cruise together um over Christmas. We're going to Alaska. <laughs> oh man. All right. Yeah, I mean I don't know. I mean, it was an okay day. Obviously, they didn't have Ty, so that that's you know that's really the only receiver you want to start for the Colts. So it's kind of expected not to see anybody really jump off the page here. Uh, any any thoughts about the Colts? No, I think you you nailed it. I mean, you know, Mac didn't really get his because they were behind um, without Ty and without Funchess. They they spread the ball out um, to to a little bit of everyone. So uh, Pascal. Campbell Hines all pretty evenly, you know, split split those. Yeah. Uh Dolphins, Chargers 30, Dolphins 10. Again, man, this game was a lot closer than it you know, people thought first half Miami's keeping in these games and then just fall apart. Uh what for whatever reason, man, did they just fall apart? Um Phil Rivers 310 and two touchdowns. They even brought in Tyrod for uh, I got to mention my tie rod. Go Hokies. Um, <laughs> Eckler, man, his last hurrah, and it was a good one. Uh, 18 carries, 60 yards, and a touch. Five receptions, 62 yards, and a touch. So two touchdowns for him. He looked real good, man. Um, Pope, I want to say, got – oh, they're counting as at a reception touchdown, but I, I remember him getting in the end zone and thinking, oh, man, Eckler is going to be pissed, and then Eckler decided to – Go do what he did, so not a big deal. Um, Keenan Allen was a big disappointment, in my opinion, for this game. Like People thought he was just going to eat, man, and he didn't. Uh, five for 48, that's it. Um, considering Rivers threw for 310, you thought Allen was just going to crush it with no Mike Williams. Uh, you know, it just, But it didn't happen. Any, I mean, any thoughts as to like what went wrong for Keenan Allen? Well, without watching the game, um, <clears throat> one of my fears with starting, uh, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> um, one of my fears with starting Keenan Allen this week was just simply that, um, you know, they, they really didn't have many people to throw the ball to, uh, and that, you know, they would, you know, bracket or, you know, double cover Allen as, you know, as much as possible. And like I, said, I didn't watch the game, so I don't know that for a fact, but I, I can't imagine there'd be another reason for, for him to have such a subpar game and a game that you know he easily could have you know had a game like he had the other three weeks of the year because he's been an absolute beast no it makes sense on my side of the ball i mean i think we could spend 20 seconds talking about this (laughs) Devontae parker got in the end zone actually looked like a receiver today um that was it move on (laughs) yeah i mean i mean josh rosen i guess wasn't terribly terrible but a touch? I mean, you're you know you're not. I'm sure he's on on the wire in your league, yes. unless you're starting like three quarterbacks or something ridiculous. Yeah, no, he's not getting started anywhere. I wouldn't um, think so. Browns and Ravens, and wow, uh, hello Cleveland Browns, welcome back. Forty points on the Ravens at at Baltimore. Yes, sir. Yo, that's for real, dude. Uh, Mayfield looked like he was pissed off today. 342 and a touchdown. Uh, did throw a pick. Chubb, though, 165 and three touchdowns. Needless to say, the league I faced him, I got smashed. Uh, an 88-yard run uh, helped that one. Landry did really well today. <clears throat> uh, 167, no touchdowns. But uh, good old Ricky Seals Jones got in the end zone today. There was there was a sp- there was a point in time. Like very early on in the one o'clock games, that there was like all these random mofos that got in the end zone. <laughs> and like Keith and I were keeping track track of it on Twitter, as were many people. But uh, it was just funny. Like, and Ricky Seals Jones was one of them. It was so early. It was like, who the hell? No, nobody's starting these guys. Get no, get the ball to like Odell, Landry, Chubb. These guys, not Ricky Seals Jones. Get out of here. Um. But yeah, I man, apologize like, to his family if he's listening to this, which I'm sure he is. Absolutely, man. Him, him and I are boys. We're we're good. <laughs> we're good like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, so look, we know the Cleveland offense has sort of struggled early on this year. I mean, is this something that they can kind of 
look to build from? Is this something that, you know, this is the Cleveland offense that we all expected, right? Um, Yeah, a little bit. I, I think they're going to be kind of up and down uh, all year. I mean, I mean, you know, they're, they're still new, not just in general, but, but to each other. So, you know, right. Beckham, you know, they score 40 points and Oda Beckham has two catches for 20 yards and you go, what the hell? Yeah. Like, uh, okay. Targets, like, though. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah good, I mean, it's, it, now it's, it's been a, it's been a weird week. You know, there, there's definitely, it's been a weird week with guys that didn't quite do what you thought they would do. Or there have been guys that put up maybe the numbers you thought, but not in the way you thought they would do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a weird week. And yeah, I don't think very many people would have said that, you know, the Browns are going to score 40 points on the Ravens. No. But I mean, they, they definitely have that potential. That, that's what made them so interesting at the beginning of the year was, I mean, they're loaded on that offensive side of the ball. They are. And I mean, they could, they could do this every week or they could go out there and put up 10 points and, you know, you know, Baker Mayfield looks terrible. So I think it's, I think it's going to be a lot like this. Um, I mean, where you just don't quite know what you're going to get. Yeah. Hey, if, if Baker doesn't perform, I say they just throw in back at quarterback. Did you happen to see that <laughs> replay where he like juked between two guys on like a wide receiver reverse that was meant to be a pass stepped up and then just chucked it 50 to 55 yards in the air. I didn't that see. Was it. I heard about it, dude. Yeah, go to Slack. I put the, uh, I put the link to the the Twitter video, um, uh, in there earlier today. It is it is hell impressive, dude. Uh, on the Ravens side, uh, I mean they still got some stats, but it wasn't pretty, dude. Um, you know, Lamar again got kind of brought down to earth. You know, had a lot of garbage times to save his ass for the for fantasy owners. You know, two forty seven and three, but two picks, not good. Um, 66 yards rushing, so you're going to take that. And obviously, a good overall fantasy day for him. But um, you know, Mark Ingram looked really good again, 71 yards receiving. Um, I think a lot of people were looking at Hollywood Brown in this game, and it just didn't happen. Uh, four four catches, 22 yards. Other than that, not a whole lot. Um, thoughts on this Ravens offense again, having considerably like a, a second bad week in a row. Well, I mean, just like on offense, I think the Browns' defense is very similar where, I mean, they can go out there and, and have big weeks, and they can also go out there and throw duds. Um, Lamar Jackson, even though his his you know overall stats aren't amazing, I mean, no one's happy with two interceptions, but, um, you know, he, he threw three touchdowns, 250 basically yards pass, and ran for, you know, 66 more. I mean, so, so Lamar Jackson is the real deal. Um but yeah, you got to be a little disappointed. I mean, they had ten different guys catch a ball this week. Fantasy wise, that sucks. You know, yeah. I mean, if Can't you're sitting there, figure that one out. <laughs> now, if you're relying on you know Mark Andrews, which I you know I wouldn't blame you. I mean, the, the, you know, you, you've had two weeks in a row where you're kind of wondering if it's the injury or if it's just you know a young quarterback and you know a young offense kind of trying to figure things out. So you, you know, Lamar answer. Jackson. Yeah, sure did. Yep. Um, yeah, but I mean, I guess my takeaway is Lamar Jackson is, you know, going to be for real, um, you know, all year. Uh, Mark Ingram, you know, didn't score or, you know, anything, but, um, you know, he's he's going to be solid. And then the receiving, the receiving core could be, you know, up and down like this all year. Yeah, uh, totally agree with you there. So we've got Carolina 16, Houston 10. This was a weird game, dude. Um, you know, just look at it, both sides of the box score here real quick. Neither quarterback threw a touchdown or an interception. In fact, there was one interception thrown, and it was thrown by Hopkins um, on a stupid-ass quarterback or wide receiver pass across the entire field um, where the defense was playing zone. So just, yeah, dumb. Um, I mean, McCaffrey was again, like the highlight of the entire game. I mean, 93 yards, rushing a touchdown, 10 receptions for 86 yards. Other than that, man, nobody did anything worth a damn, you know, for you, even Hopkins, like nothing. So we'll just kind of cover it all right here. I mean, this is, that's it. That's the highlight of the game. I mean, what's, what's your thoughts on this game? Yeah. I mean, McCaffrey, you know, is an absolute beast. Um, you know, if you have him in your, in your lineup, you're obviously never going to sit him. Uh, he's definitely a guy that 
pretty much every week you can consider in DFS as well. Um, I was a little bit concerned about him this week just because uh, the Texans did a great job of shutting down Eckler, who is like a you know light version of, of McCaffrey at this point. But, I mean, he straight balled it out this week, and you can never be surprised when he does that. Uh, Kyle Allen's going to you know be sticking around for a little bit longer. I'm not a huge fan of him, but you know if you are definitely in a you know two quarterback league and you know you've had injuries or he's still available and you want to take a shot on him, I mean I you know he hasn't shown me any reason not to. Yeah, I mean I'm rolling him out in Scott Fishbowl, so hopefully uh, you know he doesn't have a hopefully he has better games than today, but yeah, know, he, yeah. he'll be okay for mm-hmm. for a short time. The game of the week, man, as far as fantasy points, Rams and Tampa Bay, man, uh, 55 points put on the board by the Bucs. Um, the Rams put up 40. I mean, this game was just crazy. Jared Goff threw for 517 yards. That's just crazy. Um I don't even know where to start, man. It's just so much here, right? I mean, Godwin, 12 <laughs> receptions, 172 with two touchdowns. Mike Evans finally got in the end zone. It was looking real bad for him um, for most of this game. Ronald Jones looked good, getting almost you know more than double the carries of Peyton Barber. And I didn't get to watch this game. You know, I got I got the kids to deal with later on in the afternoon, so I don't get to watch the the last part of the the later games, unfortunately. But from everything I read and, and, and comments, I hear that Ronald Jones had like some bigger runs called back due to like just stupid penalties, right? And so he could have had even even more a bigger game, right? Um, I, you know, Winston four touchdowns, and the big thing is one pick from him. That's awesome. I mean, just kind of digest the Tampa Bay side of this, you know, real quick. Well, I I feel like we've kind of. I've kind of said this before about uh, um, other teams, but, you know, Jameis especially, a very Jekyll and Hyde. Um, you know, yes. at, at the end of the year, his, his stats are usually, you know, good. And you'll get games like this where he'll go for almost 404 touchdowns and, and look fantastic. And then the next week he'll look like, you know, some homeless kid that, you know, they, they picked up and <laughs> threw out there. Um so I mean it's you know it's tough it's tough to trust anyone on that team outside of Evans and Godwin. Um, I say Godwin. I mean if you Godwin have trusted, right? I mean yeah, I, I suppose. Um but Winston, I mean if you own him, obviously you own him because you like him and you're going to play him. So I don't necessarily think too many people are going to, you know, debate on if they have him or not DFS wise. I I mean, I wouldn't mind, I guess, throwing him out there just as a contrarian play every now and again and, you know, being able to match him up with, you know, Goodwin and Evans. But it's, you know, you're not going to see this from them or something close to this every week. No, definitely not. On the Rams side of the ball here, you know, I just said golf threw for 517. Three interceptions, though, two touchdowns. So, I mean, that's that's big there. Threw the ball 68 times. That's just crazy, man. Yeah. His shoulder's still on. He just, needed, he just needed one more. <laughs> right, yeah. One yeah. more. Damn not, it. Not, not quite so nice. Almost nice. Um, yeah. Todd Gurley, though, this is a big story to me. Um, Todd Gurley ran the ball five times. And, yes, they were playing from behind most of the game, but ran the ball five times for 16 yards. He got saved by two short yardage touchdowns, dude. Um and yeah, he was involved in the passing game, so so you like that because he hasn't really been uh, so far at this point in the season. But I don't know. I mean, I am at this point, I am legit worried about Gurley. I don't like. I did not touch him in any of the leagues. I you know I drafted this year, and I'm very happy I didn't. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, Gur- Gurley is a guy that I've stayed away from as well. Um, this game in particular doesn't scare me. Uh, I mean, they had, you know, I mean, Brown had five carries, Gurley had five carries, but Gurley also caught seven balls. Um, but, I mean, like we said, Goff threw the ball 68 freaking times, man. So, I mean, Woods had 13 catches. Right. Cup had, Cup had nine. But, you know, yeah. Cooks had six. I mean, this was a game where whatever the game plan was going into it got scrapped, um, and they had to throw the ball all over the place. So this particular stat line from Gurley, as far as, you know, carries, it doesn't change anything for me. 
um, but because I, I had felt the same way prior to the game. So it's not not good news necessarily, but I wouldn't say it's worse news than, than what we've kind of already been seeing. I suppose. Um, moving on, Seattle 27, Arizona 10. Russell Wilson kind of came back down to earth, 240 and a touch. Solid game by him. Didn't need to do a whole lot, obviously. Uh, probably biggest news here is that True to their word, they did not go away from Carson. 22 carries, and he uh, 104 yards, and I, I believe he did not fumble. So uh, we're good there. We're good. Hooray. <laughs> um, Disley, uh, I was actually uh, talking shit with one of my uh, uh, Dynasty League owners who I've got like three tight ends who are all good, and I was like, you want Disley? You just picked up James O'Shaughnessy. And he's like, no, I'm good. I was like, really? <laughs> okay. So uh, – uh, he was like, Disley, Disley's not any good. I was like, you watch. He's going to score this week. And he did. So well, that's, yeah. just, that's kind of fun. It is Arizona, though. I get right. it. But I was just like, hey, he's going to score this week. And he did. No, get, sell, 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 sell. If I you know, right? Disney. That's what I'm trying sell to him. do. Sell him right now. <laughs> I'm trying. Do not wait. Uh, I'm trying, dude. I'm trying so hard because I've got Kittle and Delaney Walker on that team. And I'm just like, I can't uh, own all three of these guys. No. Um, But, yeah, I mean, so I don't know. What do, what do we take from the Seattle side here? I mean, pretty much exactly what you expected. Um, I know me personally, I thought that there'd be a little more passing. Um, I had a lot of shares of of Wilson and then a combination of two of the three of Lockett, uh, Metcalf, and Disley. Um, mostly Disley and, and Lockett. So, I mean, I wasn't drastically disappointed. I mean, Wilson didn't do exactly what I was hoping he would do because, like you said, you know, they, they did feed Carson the ball 22 times, so... It's not surprising, a little disappointing, but not surprising. And yeah. then, did, and just real quick, like, like I was saying, on Disley, this I think is it, this is not who you're going to continue to see. Um, I'm not saying he's going to be terrible, but if you if you do own him, if you can get rid of him before next week, I would advise you to do so. Yeah, I think the tough part there is like you have to have another decent option at tight end because you cannot well, yeah, drop him and then go pick up, you know. James O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he scored today, but still, like you can't rely on him. For, I'd no, rather but rely I on imagine... Disley nine times out of ten, right? So anyway, yeah. But so what you were kind of saying though is that like you know Seattle didn't do exactly what you thought they were going to do, and it's because Arizona did not do what we thought they were going to do. Like we've seen the Seattle defense get exploited time and time again, and you thought Arizona, you know, despite not having a good record and not really being an overall good team, right? Especially on defense, they can they can move the ball. They can put points on the board, right? They just didn't today. And Murray looked right. average, no touchdowns. He got a pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Johnson was was okay on the ground, but you know did get eight catches for ninety nine yards. But like really, the story came down to just Murray not just being overwhelmed. It looked like today, um, and they just couldn't move the ball. They didn't score uh, until very very late. Uh, so. I mean, what what do we, what are we feeling with Kyler Murray at this point? It's been four games. Yeah, it's four games, and I mean he's a rookie, so things are you know gonna more than likely take some time for him. I think a lot of people, myself somewhat included, thought that you know him you know playing in an offense that he's already comfortable with, um, there might be a less of a learning curve, but. Like when I when I watched him play against the Lions in Week One, um, you could definitely see that he was not used to the speed of the game. So I think there's an adjustment period with him. And I mean, to be honest, that that Cardinals offense is really good. Uh, ten, ten points is a little bit surprising. I, mean, I didn't expect him to score like thirty, but right. I, I think that that's an offense that that is okay. I mean, I, I like a lot of pieces that they have. Um. Uh, so I, I, again, I wouldn't be too worried about him after you know just this particular week. Yeah, I I, I don't disagree. I'm, I'm in a couple of leagues where I kind of play around with like one's my family league. I, I do have him just for kind of fun, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm I'm hurting because of it. But uh, I'm just <laughs> gonna hold on and have fun with him. Yeah. Um, moving on here, Minnesota six, Chicago sixteen. Uh, low scoring game, probably not super surprising, but I don't think anybody thought sixteen to six. Um, not not a lot to love here, dude. Uh, Cook got bottled up all game, which isn't good. 
Uh, luckily kind of fell into the end zone at the end and kind of salvaged the day for him. Did get six catches. So, I mean, I guess PPR leagues, you're, you're, you're feeling okay, but it's not what you had been getting. Uh, Cousins, no touchdowns. Not great. We have a dig sighting, dude. He's, hey. he's alive. Um, I, you know, that's awesome. I had a lot of people being like, I'm going to sell low on digs, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's just terrible. And I was like, nah, he's too talented. Like, this isn't going to be this way all year. They've been in these crazy games where they've gotten out by, like, 20 points in the second quarter and just abandoned the pass. That's not going to happen every week. Relax. Diggs is too good. Um, so... I still am not sure he's the guy he was last year or even the year before anymore because his offense is totally different. But, like, this is good, right? Like, this is what we want to see from Diggs. Can we expect more of this going forward? Um, I mean, yes and no. Uh, I, I think on any given week, either Diggs or Thielen can have a big game. Um, I, I think even just like you said, the offense is a little bit different now. And so I think the days of – you know, Diggs and Thielen both, you know, scoring a touchdown and getting 100 yards are are probably few and far between. Because, um, I mean, even if just because Cook has established himself so well. And I know Cook didn't do a whole lot today, but, I mean, if you own him, I, I think you can give him a pass this week. He got more targets than all of the receivers, by the way. Yeah, the dude's a beast, man. What's he, happened he... to Cousins, though? He's Mr. Checkdown now. That's crazy. Uh, I I mean, Way it could. $30 million guaranteed. <laughs> Well, As a I mean, it fan, depends, I you know. Laugh at that. Yeah. Sorry, I have to. I mean, they've um, got a great defense, so that's true. I mean, you know, they're they're not playing to outscore Just you. Not to lose. <laughs> yeah. So fantasy wise, it sucks. Um Because yes. like I said, you're not going to get all three of those guys probably to go off more than you know maybe one time this year. Yeah, definitely not against the Bears. Stout defense, clearly. On the Bears side, um, I'll start with the positive here. David Montgomery, twenty-one carries. 53 yards. Um, Allen Robinson, seven receptions, 77 yards. The bad, Mitchell Trubisky got knocked out and knocked yeah. out early. And uh, Chase Daniel came in and played admir- admirably. I can't talk right now. Um, 195 yards and a touchdown, 22 for 30. I mean, was okay. I mean, it gets a pretty solid defense. And, you know, they won the game. So you can't ask for much more, right, as a, as a Bears fan. Mm-hmm. Fantasy wise, like you're not loving this team right now. You're just you're just not. I mean, is there anything that we're looking at and going like, oh, here here here's the game that like we're gonna hang our hat on and go, this is this is when it started. I mean, I like seeing that you know Montgomery got the bulk of the carries. Um, his efficiency wasn't good, but again, we're talking you know a very defensive game. Um, you know, two good defenses, and you know with Trubisky being out as well. Um, again, I didn't get the opportunity to watch this game, um, but I would have to anticipate that when Trubisky goes out, that they probably, you know, put eight men in the box and say, okay, Chase Daniel, you know, let me see you beat us. Yeah. Um, but it's still, I mean, 21 carries, you know, they had a lead. It was a, a close game, low scoring. So he's going to get his carries. And I'm assuming Daniel did enough to obviously win the game, but. Um, it's really going to be interesting to see. I haven't heard any more about Trubisky's injury, so I don't know exactly what we're looking at. Um, it, but either way, I guess, it, as far as Chase Daniel is concerned, I, there's no real reason to run out to, to go pick him up. Um, you know, no. that off, that, that's not a great offense. No, um, definitely not. So kind of just – it hurts me to say as a Lions fan, but, you know, kind of hope that, you know, Trubisky isn't, you know, hurt too bad and, you know, gets his way back on the field here soon. Yeah, they're saying it's a shoulder injury, but not much updates yet. But uh, mm-hmm. last game of the week for uh, for the non-primetime games here. Jacksonville squeaked out a win, 26-24 over the Denver Broncos. Gardner Minshew does it again, man. Nothing sexy, but, dude, it gets, it gets the job done, 2-13-2. Um, <clears throat> like I said, O'Shaughnessy scored. Now, the receiver is really not much. The big the big story, man, for net, 29 carries, 225 yards. Wow. Um, he just cannot find the end zone for whatever reason this year. It's kind of weird. Um, but you, yeah, you can't go away from this guy, right? Like this, the the sheer number of carries he is getting and the, and the amount of team carries he's getting is just – astronomical right you can't go away yeah. from this guy 
No, I no. I mean, if you own Fournette, you're playing Fournette. There's not a whole lot of thinking going into it. Um, I mean, he, he's matchup proof at that point. DFS wise, I guess it, you know it, it varies um, depending on the matchup. But just you know, regular fantasy, you're, you're definitely playing him if you have him without even blinking an eye. Yeah, Denver side here, we got pretty even split in the backfield, but uh, Lindsey looked way better this week. Um, mm-hmm. 53 yards, nine carries, so 16 for six or six carries for 16 yards for Freeman. And um, although Freeman got four receptions to Lindsey's one, so, the, I mean, there's that. Um, Flacco looked all right, man. 303 yards, three touchdowns and a pick. Um, you know, Sanders got his five for 104. You're kind of worried about Sanders there at one point. I heard something about, like, a quad injury with him uh, right before the game started. But uh, it wasn't super serious, it didn't sound like. And then Sutton got in the end zone twice, so there's good news there. Um uh, I mean, I th- I think you're rolling out the receivers, right? And Sanders and Sutton, you know, as, as wide receiver threes type of thing each week, and hoping for maybe maybe more. Lindsey, I I guess I'd be willing to throw out there most weeks, but dude, it's a super disappointment, you know, again from him after a really good week three from him. What what do you got here with them? Yeah, I mean, I, I do like Sanders, actually. Sanders is, DFS-wise, he's a guy that I've played quite often just because um, I think he's very underrated. You can usually get him pretty cheap. Um, so I, I'm a fan of Sanders, generally speaking. Um, but when it comes to, like, Lindsey and Freeman, man, that that is just frustrating if you own either one of them because they just evenly split everything i mean between them you know they they each had a combination of you know 10 carries um or receptions and it's it's been like that and it's going to be like that probably until somebody gets hurt um it's not like one of them's a veteran or something and you know when the broncos really actually decide hey this season's over let's give you know the young guy you know more carries and see what we got they're they're both pretty much in that same boat so i think you're going to just continue to see that every single fucking week <laughs> yeah yeah i mean in in you know we kind of saw it last week with Lindsay getting a little bit more work after freeman got knocked out of the game for you know a couple of series and then just Lindsay got the hot hand they just wrote it yep. right so mm-hmm. there you go you know it's pretty spot on analysis right there so all right man uh i don't know you got any venting stories from the week i already kind of said mine man i went against chubb in one league and it just got destroyed <laughs> no like, i mean I could probably go on about a three-hour tangent about the the Lions Chiefs game, but I, nobody wants to hear me talk about that. So <laughs> I I will just I will just I will just lose sleep over it tonight. <laughs> Dude, you guys played a hell of a game. Um, I right, well, yeah. that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, see y'all next week.